Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. And today we're going to talk about roses, the care, the maintenance, and we're also going to talk to Paul Zimmerman. He is the rose expert. This week we had a real nice review from Lovejoys, gave us uh, five stars, and wrote a, a nice blurb. So we appreciate that. Thank you. Did they say anything about me? In fact, they had co-host in quotes yeah. that they really liked the co-host. So yes. We appreciate it. So today we're going to talk about roses and a little bit of the history of roses. There's fossil evidence of roses that go back 35 million years. Wow. And in China, about 5,000 years ago, they started cultivating it in gardens. Hmm. And they were using it as confetti during celebrations and as perfumes. And then during the Roman Empire... They actually created huge public gardens and primarily large rose gardens. So that's where I guess a lot of this breeding of roses and specific types went on during the Roman Empire. They also were using, some of the roses were considered so well-formed and and fragrant that the roses and the plants themselves, so that they could use them to grow new rose plants, were used as currency. Did you know that all roses are edible? No, I didn't. Depending on the soil and the type of rose, uh, the taste is either fruity to minty. Really? Mm Mm-hmm. That's so weird. You could take rose petals and put them in ice cube trays and freeze them. Okay. And then you could put them in punch, and then they add some flavor once the ice melts. Interesting. That's funny. So many people used to think that roses are very difficult, kind of delicate, hard to grow. Uh Especially like we're here in the Midwest. You know, a lot of our customers would come in. And every once in a while, we'd have rose bushes uh, when we sold our flowers. And, you know, a lot of the concern was, you know, I don't want to have to cover them. I don't want to have all this pruning. It just sounds complex. Well, my grandpa had rose bushes in the backyard. And really? It seemed to be a big process. I mean, he had to prune it and then, you know, the rose cones to cover it. Oh, really? You know, he he went winter. through all that. Yeah. You know, he'd pack it with uh, leaves that had fallen on the base. So, I mean, Smart. it was a whole thing. Well, it's interesting. Like you mentioned, a rose bush. Uh, people don't. A lot of people don't realize they're they're actually just mm-hmm. a bush, a flowering bush. And the new hybrids are they're bred to be very hardy and disease resistant. So mm-hmm. it's easier and easier to to have roses. And for your landscaping, it's you know it's a great look. They're very fragrant, so they're nice to have. And we'll go over some of the tips. It's really not that difficult. And especially. Once we talk to Paul, you know, he has a, a nice website and videos, it, and he kind of lays out how easy it is to maintain these. So you don't want to start with planting roses? I think that's a good place. So most are, when you buy them, it, the best place to buy it is at your local nursery because they're going to have the roses specifically for your area. Because mm-hmm. a lot of places will sell them online, and I guess you can get some really uh, good prices, but you need to make sure that it's, it's a good plant for your area. And so that's why a a landscape or a local nursery will uh, do a nice job of giving you the right ones. When you're planting them, usually May and June are the best months to to plant it. Try to pick an area that gets six to eight hours of full sunlight Hmm. because roses really need that sun. They will not do well if they're in a shady area. And then you're looking for a well-drained area with lots of organic matter. And probably one of the easiest ways to do it, especially if you're, you just want to grow roses for your landscaping, is to actually create a raised bed. So that way you can add the dirt, you can add some organic matter to it, you can create this thing, it's easier to, to tend. And then it, you can create an area that drains easy because you're controlling the, the soil. The pH for the soil, the roses really like six to seven, so seven being neutral. Uh, anything lower than seven would be acidic, so six is just slightly acidic. Any type of soil amendment, you'd want to do this before you plant your plants, because the especially when you're just planting your roses, the roots are very delicate. Mm-hmm. And one thing that uh, you know a lot of people again don't like to take the time to do, but you can go to a nursery, take some soil, go to your nursery, and they'll test it for you. Mm. And then you want to plant, now if you have miniatures, the little miniature roses, you want to plant those about two feet apart. And then if you're planting, if you plan on having larger plants, let's say a a four foot or a six foot tall bush, 
uh, you'd want to plant them a distance of two-thirds of the height. So for example, if we plan on having six foot tall bushes, you'd want to plant those about four feet apart. There's a couple ways you can buy roses, either bare root or potted. So the bare root doesn't have any soil around the roots. And then potted is just like a, a normal plant. Is there a difference in how to plant these? So for a bare root, you're going to want to soak that in a bucket of water. And you can submerge the whole thing in a bucket of water huh. for about 8 to 10 hours. And then you go on to prune it back to three or four buds. So each cane, each, each uh, stem, right is going to have these little buds. It's a little swelling where the leaves are going to come out. So you count from the very base, you count up three or four, and you want to cut those back to that size. Hmm. You soak it, and then we're going to dig a hole. We're going to make it wider than the roots because the roots are very delicate when the uh, roses is new like this. You're going to want to fill three quarters of this hole with the soil, and if you amended it, if you added some organic material to it, and then you're going to fill it with water, and you're going to make this mud, you're going to make it really sloppy so that you can put the roots in there and you're not going to crush them and damage right, yeah. them. And just let it sit there and let that water drain out, and then it's going to compact. And you don't want to take any force like your hands and really compact that soil and damage the, the roots. And then you're just going to fill that with soil on top of it. And that's kind of the way you would plant a bare root rose. And then with a potted rose, you're just going to create your hole so that it fits in. And you want the top of that, that root ball or the top of the soil that came around the roots to match the top of the height of your dirt, the ground, mm -hmm. or if you're putting it into a, a raised bed. And then with a potted rose, one trick that a lot of guys use is they take a really sharp razor knife and they just make slits from the top to the bottom all along the side of that ball and you're breaking free the roots because mm. what happens sometimes is you've got the roots all kind of wound together in this right. ball especially if you have a, a different type of soil sometimes they don't want to go into that soil mm -hmm. so you want to you know get a lot of moisture in there cut those roots just by running a razor blade straight down and then set it in there and, and drop your soil around it. Aren't you supposed to do that if you plant a tree? Too? Trees are the same way, absolutely. Yeah, so the roots don't get bound. How much water do roses need? So I've heard a, f a few different things. Um, you know, there's a, a couple schools of thought where you should give it about an inch worth of water a week. A lot of guys want you to do all that watering at once. So one good deep watering of an inch. There's another school of thought where you would give it a half an inch twice a week. Mm -hmm. And then I've also heard a couple guys lately saying that they like to give their roses two inches of water a week and wow. they seem to do better. So roses like water. Yeah. And, you know, like most things, especially if you're in the, the southern states or if you're in, in uh, states where it's warm and you don't get a hard freeze, you know, you're worried more about fungal diseases and you don't want to do, you know, small amounts of water throughout the week because it can uh, increase your chances of getting disease and, and fungal growth. So one, usually one good deep watering, and that also helps the roots grow deeper too. So are you just standing there with a hose, you know, watering your roses or with a sprinkler? You can use a hose, and in fact, you know, like we talked about grass, you'd want to do it early in the morning mm -hmm. so that uh, you don't have a lot of evaporation. But uh, what's really popular are the soaker hoses. Right. Just wrap it around the base of your rose bushes, turn on your water, and then you've timed it so that you know how long, you know, 15, 20 minutes, so you know how long it takes to well, get... Why don't you describe how a soaker hose works? So, a hope, so you have a couple different types, but the main type of soaker hose, it looks like a regular hose. Uh, it's it's kind of dense and almost foamy feeling, mm -hmm. and it weeps out the water. So They're generally of, black. Yeah, and instead of spraying, it just it, it runs out. It's almost like it's it's leaking out of the whole length mm -hmm. of the hose. And so you're keeping your water right around the root area so you can wind this right around the root zone and that water is dropping straight down where you want it. So you're not wasting a lot of water in areas that there are no roots. So to help maintain that moisture, mulching is really important for roses. And you can use wood, straw, grass clippings even. You'd want them about two inches deep and then the trick is you don't want those that mulch right against the canes of the bush. You want that to start a couple inches away from the base of the plant. And then you want to mulch all the way around the, the root zone. So, you know, six, eight inches wide right around your plant. And that's going to help retain that moisture. 
and keep the soil nice and moist. So a couple of the main products that we sell at the hardware store for roses is just the fertilizer and then the stuff to prevent disease. Yeah, very popular. So let's first talk about the fertilizers. So probably three of the most popular that, that we sold, and from customers they said they did about the best, was at Bear Advanced. Many of our customers like this because they carry an all-in-one. It has insect control, a disease control, and a fertilizer all in the same product. The fertilizer lasts about six weeks, and it's systemic. So they take this, they put it in, they mix it in water, mm-hmm. and they put it around the root zone. It absorbs up into the plant, and it helps protect it against uh, Japanese beetles, all kinds of different insects. So very interesting, and it gives it the fertilizer. So that was very popular. Then we had that espoma. It was called uh, rose tone, mm-hmm. and that had not only like like 10 or 15 different type of nutrients but it also had beneficial microbes right so it's getting into the soil just like we talked to the guys at jonathan green how important it is to have healthy soil this would help get into the soil break down the nutrients so that it's easier absorbed up into the rows and that, then that was all organic right yes that's all organic and then job's also had an organic or they have an organic called knockout Mm-hmm. And that, again, has microorganisms and bacteria to help break down the nutrients in the soil, keep the soil and the microorganisms in the soil healthy, and then also provide this food for about six weeks for your rows. So how often are you fertilizing? So about every six weeks. It really depends. There's a few different schools of thought, uh, you know, but roses need fertilizer throughout the season. Mm-hmm. The, the main thing you want to do is stop around August because... The, the plant has to kind of thicken up and prepare itself for winter. And if you're giving it too much nitrogen late into the summer, uh, it can actually hurt the rows huh. because it's, it's kind of being tricked into not thinking it's time to toughen up for winter. So that's kind of the, the rule of thumb. Right around August, you'd probably want to cut back on your fertilizer. So if you want to protect your roses from pests and disease, uh, well, first off, what kind of pests are threatening uh, roses? So primarily Japanese beetles and aphids do a lot of damage and from our customers who were actually growing these roses and coming in for the products probably one of the most popular products that they were buying were the Bear Advanced Mm -hmm. so they have a spray that you can put onto it which it kills what's on there and it leaves a residual. So it's a ready to use spray? It's a ready to use spray so you're killing what you see and then that residual spray actually kills new insects that come and try to chew on it and then they have a couple different products that are systemic so what is that systemic so it's actually you you mix it you put it around the root area and it actually sucks it up through the plant Hmm. and so when these when these insects bite the leaf the the insecticide is already in the plant (laughs) so it's it's pretty cool it builds up the the defense from the inside so that's the stuff that i used to buy my grandpa when he had his rose bushes yeah simple you know Mm -hmm. you mix it you put it like you're watering and uh, very easy to use and and you know our customers who came in who are doing this they really seem to like the results so with roses we're going to have to protect them from winter damage if you're in an area that has a mild winter you're just going to use mulch or straw and build this up against the base of the rose and you're going to really build this up a foot or more some people will build it up to two feet high on the base of the rose bush so you're not trying to cover the whole plant no just the bottom part foot or two you're going to prune this back and then in cold winter areas instead of straw you're going to use soil and build this up a foot or more Hmm. that will protect the bush for next year you're going to stop your fertilizing but you want to maintain that water because it's very important that they go into winter and they've been fully hydrated that helps the cells in the plant it helps protect it against uh, any damage in the winter and then rather than deadheading which they call cutting off the spent flower so you have a flower that you know it starts to fall apart Mm -hmm. uh, you know you're you're pruning those back you're actually going to let those develop into hips it's almost like a little seed bud, and that's a signal to the plant to toughen up for winter. Hmm. Those are some good basics on rose care, and now we'll talk to Paul, and he'll give us some expert advice on how to prune roses. How you doing, Paul? I'm good. Hey, if I wanted to add roses to my landscape, what are some real basic pruning tips and then the tools that I would need? Yeah, the basic thing is to understand that what you traditionally heard about pruning roses, which is the 18 inches high and the outward-facing bud eye, well, that technique was designed more for, for hybrid tea roses to get long-stem cut flowers. 
Those okay. cut flowers could be either for the florist industry or for people who exhibit roses. And if that's your goal, that, that works very well. But for the gardener who's growing things like knockout, for example, which is a gardener or a shrub rose, you actually want to disregard those rules. And a couple of basic things that I tell people. First of all, you want to prune or trim the rose depending on what its job is. So, for example, if you've got a rose that you want to keep at five to six feet high because uh, you want some privacy, then go ahead and just, you know, prune it up nice and tall and maybe trim it all season long. You know, for a climber, you trim it to keep it neat, so just kind of keep those side shoots that come off those main canes, keep, keep those trimmed up as well. That being said, there's a couple basic things that you always want to do when you're pruning roses. First of all, you want to start with dead wood. Um, it's simple because it's dead and it's not going to do you any good anyway. And what I find when you cut out the dead wood, it starts to reveal the rose a little bit um, in the shape of the plant. Then the next thing you're going to want to take out is look, start looking for any like thin growth or twiggy growth or things that don't really have a lot of vigor in them. Go ahead and start to kind of clear that stuff out as well. And then at that point, you should be pretty much just left with some nice strong canes. And you can go ahead and kind of bring those down to the height you want them to be. It could be three feet, four feet, five feet. Again, you know, the height is really dependent on what you want that rose to be. So, for example, in the back of a border, you might want to keep it at five feet. In the front of a border, you might want to bring it down to three feet. So it's, it's what the rose's job is. And outside of that, just kind of clean it up a little bit. So I always tell people with garden roses, just sort of treat them like a flowering shrub. You know, use your gardener's instincts, shape them up, cut out dead wood, and just do some basic gardening maintenance. For tools, the first thing I always recommend is a good pair of gloves. Um, okay. I use leather. Goat skin is a little softer sometimes. The kind that have gauntlets that come up your arm, those are always good to give you a little bit of extra protection. Roses have thorns. You want to take that into account. The next thing you're going to want is a good pair of, um, you know, pruners or, or you know, secateurs. The most important thing, get a pair that's comfortable for your hands. And the other thing that's real important is that the blades are what's called a bypass pruner as opposed to an anvil pruner. You want a good pair of loppers. Uh, you're going to be cutting bigger canes or larger canes, so you always want a good okay. pair of those. And the last thing I recommend is a good pair of those little, you know, folding pruning saws. They, got, you know, they have kind of a nice thin blade, fairly fine teeth, because that's always good for taking out some canes that you really can't get out with the loppers. You can kind of do some really fine work with those. And that's really okay. about all you need as far as tools go. So it sounds like for someone who just wants to start getting into roses, it's not that difficult. You hear all these horror stories on how complicated the pruning process is. Yeah, you do. I mean, you know, and I always joke about that, you know, rosarians or people who are really, really, really into growing roses love nothing better than to make rose growing incredibly complicated. Um, <laughs> and I know what you're talking about. You know, that's the outward-facing butt-eye, five-leaf lit leaf set, 45-degree angle, sanitize your pruners and bleach between cuts and you know, stand on one foot and do a war dance. I mean, <laughs> it just goes on. And, and as I tell people, you know, that, that's if you want to exhibit general gardener. I always tell people, you know, you know how to trim an azalea. You know how to trim a camellia. You know how to trim a budlia. You know how to trim a shrub. Sure. So just look at the rose as a flowering shrub. And if you take away all the myths and all the things that you, you think you're supposed to do and just look at it as another flowering shrub in your garden, that's how you're going to prune it. Wonderful. Hey, Paul, I have a question. We're here in the Midwest, and at the hardware store, we sold a lot of rose cones every year. If we're buying roses from, a, let's say, someone who's selling roses in our neighborhood so they know what roses should do well, are the rose cones important, or can you go without that? You can go without them. Um, you know, the thing is to do exactly what you just said. You know, get roses from someone who knows roses in your area. Who knows what roses are going to be cold hardy and what roses are not going to be cold hardy. That's the first thing to take into account. The next thing to take into account, there's two things you want to do to make sure you defend your roses against the winter up in the Midwest. First okay. of all, if you can get an own root rose, which is a rose that's not grafted or not budded, um, that's a good way to go. And the reason for that is if the rose does die back to the ground, then it's going to come back as the rose you bought because the root system is the same as the rose you purchased. For example, even though I'm in the upstate of South Carolina, we had an unusually strange winter, and I had probably, I had 50 or 60 roses that literally died back down at the ground, and they're all up again, and they're all doing just fine. Interesting. Um, yeah, so the other thing you want to do, if you do get a grafted rose, and there's nothing wrong with those, make sure you bury that bud union a good three to four inches deep in the ground. Uh, you know, dig okay. your hole deep enough to get that thing buried, and that's going to protect that bud union. And then what you want to do in the come winter time. 
is and you don't necessarily need a rose cone, go ahead and get some mulch or, you know, even leaves and pile it up about a foot around the plant, base of the plant. And that way, if the top canes die back a little bit, you just cut off the dead growth and then come spring, the rose will pop right back again. Beautiful. Yeah. But the biggest key Excellent. is what you said. Make sure you pick a rose that's hardy for your area. Paul, if I wanted to learn more about you, where would I go? Um, real simple. The easiest place is my website. Uh, it's just paulzimmermanroses.com. Okay, great. And I'll put a link in the show notes so that because you have some excellent information. Uh, I really enjoy your videos, and I understand you have a book out also. Yes, I do. I have a, a book out which is called Everyday Roses, and it's published by Taunton Press, and it's available. I mean, Amazon, Barnes and Noble dot com. I think Lowe's was carrying it, bookstores, and all kinds of different places. But yeah, that talks a lot about what I do and my philosophy, and it's actually a companion to the videos that I do. There's actually smart tags in the book that will take you right to the video showing you what I'm talking about in the book. Wonderful. Well, I appreciate your time, Paul. It's my pleasure. Pleasure talking to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye bye. I enjoyed that conversation with Paul. He's very knowledgeable. I think that wraps up this episode, then. If you'd like to subscribe to our podcast, you can go to iTunes or Stitcher. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. If you'd like to see any of our home improvement videos, check out our YouTube channel. It's Fix It Home Improvement Channel. You can subscribe to that as well. If you'd like to contact us, you can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Do you be a little bit of 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 a